What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be getting into Judges chapter 17. Hallelujah. And before we get started, first off, if you haven't um, heard my music yet, I just dropped a new Christian rap album or project. I don't, I don't like to call it an album necessarily. Uh, put that on on Friday. Just go to youtube.com slash C slash Larry Newport. Go to the playlist last days check that out and before we get started let me preach the gospel everyone is going to stand before god for judgment one day anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with god is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul destroyed forever god requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life in order to be with him in his kingdom and none of us are perfect we all fall short and we all fall short short of the glory of god we can't work our way into the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptations just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect, didn't deserve any punishment. The death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in the lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent. And believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And rose three days later. And through his sacrifices offer new eternal life. If you believe that. And you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent. And believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. And Judges 17 is a short chapter, but we might also do chapter 18 tonight as well in a separate video. It's all, all a part of the same story. So Judges 17 is about a man named Micah. And let's just get into it. Now there was a man of the hill country of Ephraim whose name was Micah. He said to his mother, The 1,100 pieces of silver which were taken from you, about which you uttered a curse in my hearing? Behold, the sil silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be my son of Yahuwah. Then he returned the 1,100 pieces of silver to his mother. And his mother said, I wholly dedicate the silver from my hand to Yahuwah, for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. And so there's a lot wrong right there. And you might hear the train in the background here in a second. It always happens. I was waiting for it. Um, haven't heard one come by in a while, <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, so there's so much wrong here. Israel had gone so far astray. That she said, well, first off, he stole from his mother. Admitted to it, gave it back. And she said, blessed is my son of God. Or my God bless my son. And then she said, I wholly dedicate the silver from my hand to Yahuwah for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Because they were involved in the, they were worshiping Baal or whatever this same character, which is Nimrod, was called in, uh, in this time, in this culture. The Bible says, don't make a molten image. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Don't make a graven image. And she said, I'll dedicate the silver which my son stole from me and gave back to me to God by making a graven image and a molten image for him. And this kind of goes back to the golden calf because with the golden calf, they actually thought they were worshiping God. Uh, they dedicated a, a day to God 
but they were worshiping the calf as an object of worship to God, which God said don't do. She said, I, don't, I wholly dedicate the silver from my hand to Yahuwah for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will return them to you. So when he returned the silver to his mother, his mother took 200 pieces of silver and gave them to the silversmith who made them into a graven image and a molten image. And they were in the house of Micah. So much wrong with the story. And the man Micah had a shrine. And um, just looking at the footnote. Give me one second. The footnote here for shrine. Uh, house of gods. Micah had a house of gods. And he made an ephod. Which was uh, what the priests wore. And he made an ephod and, a ho and household idols. And consecrated one of his sons that he might become priest. In those days there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. They had gone so far astray. Now there was a young man from Bethlehem and Judah. That's the Bethlehem that Jesus was born in. There was a young man from Bethlehem and Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite. And he was staying there. Then the man in, in Bethlehem. Then the man departed from the city, from Bethlehem and Judah, to stay wherever he might find a place. And as he made his journey, he came to the hill country of Ephraim to the house of Micah. Micah said to him, Where do you come from? And he said to him, I, I am a Levite from Bethlehem and Judah, and I am going to stay wherever I may, wherever I may find a place. Micah then said to him, Dwell with me, and be a father and a priest to me, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year. After he had taken um, eleven hundred pieces of silver from his mother, she took two hundred pieces of that and made the images. And then he said to him, he said to the Levite, Dwell with me and be a father and a priest to me, and I will give you ten pieces of silver a year. Cheap. Ten pieces of silver a year, a suit of clothes, and your maintenance. So the Levite went in. The Levite agreed to live with the man, and the young man became to him like one of his sons. So Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest and lived in the house of Micah. Then Micah said, Now I know that Yahuwah will prosper me, seeing I have a Levite as a priest. He thought he, just because he had a Levite as a priest, even though he was paying him so little, that God would prosper him, even though he was breaking his commandments. And that's how Judges 17 ends. Judges 18 goes in, more into Micah and his household, uh, as well as the Levites, and it gets into the uh, some of the Danites, some of the tribe of Dan, who were looking for a land, a land to, uh, to possess. But that's the end of Judges 17. Thank y'all for tuning in. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's not go astray like Micah did. Like the Israelites did back then. Let's stay focused on God. Let's serve Him with all our heart. Let's keep His commandments. Unlike so many people of the past ha haven't kept His commandments. And uh, let's serve Him with all our heart. Let's be ready. The Lord is coming soon. We're living in the last days. We need to warn the people because destruction is coming upon this world. Judgment is coming upon this world and it's serious. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants to give you eternal life. Give your life to him. Ask him to forgive you. Believe in his salvation. Turn to him and follow him and he will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. And that's the end of Judges 17. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.